Okay, in this video, um, I'm just going to show a little bit of, of some things about using and configuring Visual Studio Code. Okay, so this, this video might be a little bit random. Um, it's just some random, uh, some, some random things that I was thinking about from my own experience with using it. Uh, that might be useful for students in this class. So, um, um, I'll start maybe by talking a little bit about configuring Visual Studio. So, so Visual Studio, I've got Visual Studio running here. Uh, is, is a modern kind of um, editor, code editor, um, and integrated development environments. So um, it is similar to Sublime and Atom. Um, I think in many ways it's already surpassed them, although those editors kind of came out first. Visual Studio Code is, is a new editor. It's different from the old Visual Studio IDE, right? So, so it's kind of a completely reworked, right? So uh, but I'll talk about some of the features of it, um, and, and we've talked about some of those in previous videos. Um, so for one thing, um, um, the, the, the functionality that you can access from the main menu here, or if you're running, you know, we're, I, we're running Visual Studio Code Server here, which runs inside of a, a web server. If you run it as like a standalone application, um, this you get kind of the same menu. I think it's a little bit more extensive, but, but as a regular kind of pull-down menu, However, pull-down menus work on your operating system, but in any case, I mean, you, you can you can't really access a lot of the functionality from this menu. Uh, so, if you want to get the full list of commands or, or, or functionality, you have to use the command palette. So, so you can use the gear access gear icon to access that, uh, or Control Shift P um, to access that. Right. So, I mean, you you know it's. So until you kind of know the functionality that, that, that you need, it might be a little bit tough to find things, you know, but you can search around and maybe find, like if you have an idea, uh, like, like I want to like save all my files or um, um, say, or maybe search. I want to do some kind of search somehow, for example. So, so maybe I might want to, you know, maybe I'm looking to just open the search editor, right? So notice this doesn't have a keyboard um, shortcut associated with it, right? If I wanted to uh, use that to search files, that kind of thing. So um, as, as a kind of a random example, although for me to show this random example, um, I need to open up, let me go ahead and open up the, um, uh, the our assignment, 00 example assignment here. So I've got something up here. Let me get a file open up. In, in there so let's open up the unit test file here so for me you know th this is called like the mini map over here um, and I don't find it personally useful I mean you may or may not um, uh, this kind of just shows your view on here but, but it's never really helped me uh, get context of where I am in my file so I usually just close that off so you know if you do uh, open the command palette and look for mini map um, you can toggle that like on and off, for example, right? So anyway, the, you know, the command palette um, is, a, is a good thing to know. Once you get used to using it, uh, you, you'll find, the, for the way that you work, you'll find um, lots of functionality in there that, that will help you uh, do things in Visual Studio Code. So. Um, another quick, again, random thing. Um, there, is, there is a quick way to um, select your 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 themes for your, your code coloring themes right so against kind of my expectations I mean lately I've been getting more into dark themes I never thought that I really liked them but but I kind of do so it's, it's, you know the, 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 the basic Visual Studio um, or, or default dark theme um, to me works pretty well right if you want to change your themes you, you can find other themes by using the uh, code extensions, which I'll talk a little bit uh, about here, but but it has a good basic set of um, themes. You know that that you know you might find one that you like the best, kind of thing. So so I usually use a dark theme. Recently, it's kind of trendy, I suspect. But um, um, so, um, um, all right. So and I'll probably talk about some other things like extensions here later on. But but those those are some kind of basics. Um, let me talk a little bit about, about the editor. I think I've shown some of these before. So, so Visual Studio is kind of one of these paned editors. Okay, so it has a basic uh, left side sort of pane, which which is 
specifically reserved for um, opening and closing uh, the main things, which are the explorer, um, the, the search function, the source control, the debugger, and the extension editor, um, and the um, the settings over here. So. Um, and, and yeah, you can open and close that. And then there's also kind of a bottom one, which um, has your terminal and your problems and other kind of outputs. You can open and close those. But the other thing is that, that it is um, a pain editor. So like if I have multiple files open, um, uh, you know, I often like to have thing at least two side by side, but you can kind of, you know, however you like to work. Um, let me open up another file. Let's open up like a header here primes.hpp, right? So just as an example, uh, maybe you like to have your, your implementation file um, on top split with your header, uh, your, your header file on top um, split with your implementation file um, on the bottom. You know. So anyway, you can drag those around it's, it's, it, and it's nice. So um, uh, to be able to arrange things and, and see things the way you like them. So. Um, and this is also kind of random, but this has to do with, with the assignment descriptions that we have for our assignments. Um, so there's multiple ways that you can open up the assignment description. So you can just open up the, um, um, the, the, the repo like your GitHub repository and, and the readme file will allow you to, um, to, um, see that. So for example, um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for my um, GitHub class here. Um, but anyway, it, um, uh, yeah, I wanted, I wanted my actual assignment zero here. So let me open up GitHub, I guess. Um, oh, there it is. That's what I'm looking for, my, my assignment zero, zero repository. So so you can always read the assignment description by kind of going to your repository and, and the readme file will get displayed um, uh, here at the bottom on your main kind of landing page for your repository, right? Uh, but that file is available for you as the, the readme.md and you can just open that up. So this is an example of a markdown file, right? Um, so you can see how this, this, this basically this markdown gets rendered. Uh, I'm going to close these off here. Um, so you have different things like like the pound sign to, to define um, level one headers, and you can use pound pound for level two headers. Pound 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 for level three, and so on. You use the dashes for, make, for making bulleted lists. Uh, use like like uh, one dot two dot for making enumerated or numbered lists and so on and you can make links and things like that so markdown is becoming a pretty standard way to document a lot of coding things um, so it's a good kind of thing to learn the basics of markdown but another thing is, is you can rinse it so this is this is again the assignment descriptions in the readme.md file so I mean if this isn't um, nice enough for you to do your reading you can like right click on this and um, open the preview or use the keyboard shortcut, control shift V, or again, you could use your command palette. So like um, markdown, um, there it is. So open preview, right? So again, I was guessing if I did, if you didn't know, it was called like a preview, um, but you could guess like to search for markdown and maybe find it, right? So here, I, again, I'm gonna put this side by side. So now we can see um, our raw markdown file and the render markdown here, right, including the, the level two and the level three header that I added. Um, and I'll add another numbered list here. Another item in the list. You can actually link to stuff inside of the file, um, inside of the markdown. I can't remember how, but yeah, you can specify something to mark, to do a position, or you can just do you know like a URL. Right. So that's going to be broken, but uh, but but yeah, that'll actually be a link trying to go to um, that um, 
URL though. Okay, and so on, right? So I should probably discard those changes. But, but um, oh, and and kind of a third way um, that that has to do with um, uh, the these um, assignment descriptions are available. Um, Um, as PDF files in our repositories, um, right? So, um, so if you open up um, a file browser on your host machine, I probably have shown this before, and you navigate to it, uh, you know, you'll find your readme and, and all the files for your assignment. Um, um, Sorry for so yeah. If you go in, if, if you're doing the way I suggest, um, so every time you clone a new repository, you should put it into the assignment subfolder um, inside your dev box. So so here in this particular one uh, in my assignment would be the assignment 00, zero um, repository, uh, and that's the readme file that we were looking at. But um, um, if you want to, you know, then you can uh, open up the, the PDF version. That's another way that you can get to the um, assignment description um, if, if the PDF file um, is the easiest for you to read and, and scroll through here. PDFs are nice if you have um, a good PDF reader so you know you can use the um, the natural so here here's where like the level one level two level three headers come from you know so the level one headers make a table of contents so an easy way to navigate around there so um, all right. So, oh, and one last thing: code formatting. So, um, we've got uh, code formatting set up to use the the CLang formatter automatically whenever you save your file. Okay, so um, that is a setting um, that um, if I go down here and look at settings, and I look for format, search for that. Um, so, um, um, I thought I had format on save um, um, that should be a check so, so it, it might be it, it's on the workspace right so I, I've got the settings so in particular not not globally but uh, for each one of the repositories that you check out it'll be checked out uh, and it'll use these workspace so it should format on paste and format and save um, and you know, if you're curious, we're using the um, the the, the CLang format file, which specifies the format. So, so this is specifying basically kind of the, the coding standards, the, the the standards for laying out um, like parentheses and new lines and and white space and things um, for our, our, our code. So what what that means is if you do things, if if um, you know, so we we specified that that. Opening curly braces should be on a line of their own um, at the beginning of the indentation. Um, um, all code should be in, in, indented two spaces. So if you mess up your formatting, uh, and then if you do a save, uh, it should reformat the code. So, so it might not get everything correct, you know. So I could still maybe ask you, you know, so, so um, um, uh, that, that if you have white space problems, but 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 a lot of stuff it will automatically format for you to the class style guidelines for, for code formatting here. So if you're curious about that. And again, that's coming from the definitions in this .clang format file here. So, um, all right, so that's enough about kind of editing. Um, so uh, in the previous video about the practice example assignment, I did talk a little bit about the revision control system here. So um, uh, notice, uh, I just want to point out um, the, 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 some of the indications you get about changes in files. So notice, you know, uh, right now the only file that's changed that's different between in my local repository of the files I'm working on and the last commit that's local to my repository is the readme file, right? Um, so let me open up the, the, the readme.md file again, right? So notice here, notice the M modification. Again, that means that, that there's some modifications local in my readme file. Um, so in particular, remember I added those things. And you can see the, the green bar here. Again, this is also Git. This is stuff that I've changed uh, in this file locally so far, right? So, so if I make 
a deletion like here, um, you'll see, uh, so I guess green is indicating things that have been inserted, and, and kind of this blue is for deletion, right? Another thing, I, I think I did show it again, so if you use your revision control, if, if you click on the, the, the file here under your source control, you'll get a diff between, so, so the diff is between my last commit that's local in my repository and my, my file as I'm currently editing it, right? So I've, I've added these bits here, that's kind of what the green indicates, um, and I deleted something here. The red indicates a deletion, deleted that word here, right? I can always revert those if I want to throw all those away. Um, I think in this view, if I want to only re throw away a particular thing, um, I think I can right click and um, um, and, and like revert the selected range. So that, that just reverted that, but I kept that, right? So I, I reverted just that particular change back to the thing. Or, or you can revert the whole thing, discard all changes by doing that, right? So now we're back. Now I've got no changes locally anymore in my um, repository, right? Um, So let me go back, let me make a random change here. Um, we'll say we change that to a, a check false assertion here, right? Um, so now this file is modified, notice the M, um, and it's just that. So, so I made um, an, a, an insertion here, a, a change here. So. Um, so I guess blue is more like a modification rather than a complete insertion here. Um, and again, we could show this. So as we showed before, you know, we could stage either just that file for changes or we could cha stage all changes. Um, and you can check those in um, and you can push push those by using the, the things down here, right? Another thing I want to reiterate, though, um, is uh, this, especially for students that are working in groups, um, you need to be aware of the uh, the synchronized changes ability here. So again, uh, so, so you'd use this button down here to synchronize changes. You could um, so if you use your command palette. Let's say if I search for Git and get, we can kind of look at all the, the, the Git things um, to get an idea of, of of the things we can do under the source code using Git here. So including there should probably be like a synchronize, uh, like a push or a pull. A uh, pull is kind of the same as synchronize. Um, um, to tell you the truth, I'm not completely certain if there is a difference between git sync and git pull. So, uh, but anyway, the, the 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 what I was leading up to is that um, if you have if you're working in in a, a team with another student or two, if they push uh, you know any changes that you make and commit to your repository are just local to your repository repository until you push them. Um, to the to, to the uh, global repository, right? To your um, um, remote repository. But if you're working with a group, um, if you if you need if, if your teammate has pushed something to the repository, you won't see the stuff in the global repository until you pull it back down, right? So if you're just working by yourself, um, um, you know you never have to do like a synchronize. You just make your changes, commit them to your local repository, and then push them to the GitHub repository so that I can see them and grade them, right? But if you're working with a group, if your teammate pushes a commit, you're gonna have to do a synchronize um, or a pull to pull that back down, right? Um, and then once you do that, you'll be able to see the changes that they made. So now when you do that, your latest version locally in your commit will be the same as the, the last commit that was done um, in the, the GitHub, the, the, the main repository. Um, Okay, so anyway, um, you know, you, you won't have to learn everything about Git in this class, but you, but, but, you know, you have to learn some of those basics. And if you are working in, in a team, uh, you will have to learn the basics of collaborating with your teammates through Git and through the GitHub um, global repository. Um, all right, there's much more to learn about Git, um, but, um, you know, you'll, you'll learn some of those just by working on the assignments in this class. Um, let me talk about the uh, debugger here. Um, using the debugger, I'm going to throw away that change here. Uh, 
and let's do a, a clean build. So I'll clean everything, control shift one, control shift two to make everything. And I'll do control shift three to run my tests, okay? So at this point, um, um, I think everything should be passing. So let's, um, because this, I left it at the state at the previous video where I had um, uh, finished the practice assignment and had everything compiling. So let's open up, let's, let's put a bug in here. Um, so it would be an easy bug to do. Let's do a, a, a division instead of a, a mod here. And that should probably cause us to, whoops, um, let me rebuild that. That should probably cause us to be failing some tests now. Okay, so, so our first one that we're failing is the one on line 77 um, of the test primes, where, um, oh no, sorry, that one, the first one that we're failing. So our first one that we're failing um, is all the way at line um, 40, which makes more sense. So I was expecting is prime to have some um, errors. So, um, so anyway, um, on this one, so it's not returning false for uh, when we ask if 4 is prime, right? Let's say you were stuck on um, why this was failing here, okay? So, um, I mean, you can always use, you know, printf debugging. So, you know, we could add in, you know, a C out statement. Predestined. And, you know, you should be using C out since we're doing C++ coding in this class, so... Right, and so you can, enter, you can put in C out statements and maybe put in C out statements, you know, to, to display values at, like when you're inside the loops and stuff like that, right? Uh, so the, you should be able to see the C out statements when you run the tests. So if I run the tests, um, so I should have saw that. Let's see. So we rebuild the primes SCPP, okay. Um, we run our test. Okay, there it went. So I'm not certain what I did before, um, but yeah. So that can be difficult. And, and since we're running all the tests, so one of the main things is, is we got lots of tests that we're running. Um, so so printf debugging can be a little bit difficult, right? So oh by the way, if you, if you want to stop something that that's running, like like maybe you have an infinite loop, which can be a bug. Um, you should be able to just control C into the terminal, um, and that will um, um, do it, cause an interrupt for the terminal to happen. So, so I believe that should usually work um, for the Visual Studio Code running Linux terminals here. So, um, so let, let's let's do this with the debugger. Okay, so to do the debugger, you use the, the so our projects always build two executables, a test executable and a and a debug executable. And the debug executable um, is is built from the other source file that you have. Um, so test primes has the the test, but the main has has a separate main function that you could use for debugging. But to use this, you will have to add code. Okay, so let's say that you want to concentrate on why is is prime when I call it for four, not returning false, right? So to do that, what what you would have to do to, to debug that using the the, the regular symbolic debugger um, instead of trying to do C out or printf debugging is you'd have to modify your main.cpp say to call is prime with your thing that's failing, right? Um, and if we want to, um, um, that, that's good enough. So, so, so if we have is prime in here, 
Now we can run our debugger using the, um, the, the debugger. We should have the hook set up, so by default, it will run the, the, the debug executable um, in the debug task here when you start the debugger, okay? I'm gonna, so I'm gonna cl close the, um, uh, my, my test file, and we'll start using main program. So, so now that I've modified that, though, of course, I have to recompile. I should rebuild uh, my main.cpp and then relink the debugger, the debug executable, um, and then I'm going to set a breakpoint right, right here. So to set breakpoints, you just click on the gutter. So that's that's the simplest way to set breakpoints. Um, and then you know the, the I can go over here to the debug and I can start the de start the debugging session. Right. Uh, by default, though, I mean you don't actually have to set a breakpoint because um, when you start the debugger debugging session, it should stop at the very first line of your main function, right? So, so my debugger actually stopped right at that point. But but if you wanted to, we could say continue um, or continue. That's continue right there. So 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 these are your basic commands for using the debugger, right? So continue. We can step over or step into a function, or step back out of the function, or restart the debugging section, session, or stop the debugging session, okay? Uh, but if I continued, it should continue and then stop at my, my breakpoint that I had set, right? Or I could have set my breakpoint in is prime, so um, let's set the breakpoint here at the see out statement, right? And let's remove this one. And then let's restart the, the, the debug set session here. So if I restart it, it'll restart the debugger. It'll stop at that point, but if I continue from this point, um, it'll it'll break when we call in here for the is prime. And then we can step through. So here again, um, well, no, but again, I think I might have mentioned the debugger in a previous video, but but here you got the standard things that you have in the debugger. This is your call function call stack. So at this point, when I hit this break point, we, we started in the main function, main called is prime. So this is my function call stack. Uh, within is prime, these are my local variables. So I've got a, a, my a variable called value, which is the, the parameter. And that's really basically it. Although you can see other information like your register values and things here. But um, um, And um, then we can, you know, like uh, step over these things. So when, when I step over the see out statement, um, you'll see... Um, Actually, here on the terminal, you're seeing all the output. So in main, we had outputted the hello assignment primes, and here we just output that statement. So we have that. Um, now that we're in the context of this for loop, uh, we've got a new local variable because remember the curly braces create a new. This is something you should have learned in the first unit of our class here. Um, the, the curly braces create a new uh, scope. So now we've got a divisor variable defined. Um, and divisor uh, haven't actually um, assigned it an initial value yet. So uh, when we do one more step and we're inside of our loop, we should start off with divisor being two. Um, so their divisor is, is two. And now we, we check, we, we divide four by two. Um, and if that's equal to zero, we return false. Um, but um, but yeah, it didn't actually. Um, so it wasn't true that four divided by two is equal to zero. So we went up, uh, continuing on with the loop, right? Anyway, so that's the basics of the debugger, right? And if you kept stepping through that, you should find that um, you're expecting that um, um, it should return false at some point. Um, but um, uh, when it should have actually returned false at that point because. When the divisor was two, four divided by two um, um, goes in an even amount of time. So it should have actually returned false right there. So, um, all right. So that that's the basics of your um, of, of the debugger. One final thing I'll say: the 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 debugger, the way we're running here, it's actually running the the full GNU debugger, which is a very powerful. Debugger, and you can see that in the debug console here that, that the GNU GDB debugger um, um, ran. And if you need to, um, although it's a little bit crufty, I don't know if there's a better version of using a better like extension or plugin for using the GNU debugger. 
but if you need to, you can execute any uh, GDB command, although you have to do like this dash EXEC or dot dash EXEC. Um, you have to make this a little bit so I don't. Um, and then like your GNU debug command. So I could do like print um, value, I believe to display what the current value is of the value uh, to, uh, of the, the, the variable called value here. Right? So, so value currently has a value of 4. Right? But um, um, anyway, uh, um, there's really powerful stuff you can do with the general GDB debugger. Um, um, although, you know, you can only do the basics from the stuff that this uh, hook gives you, you know, stepping and, and uh, setting breakpoints and things use the full GDB debugger if you needed to um, um, in that way so um, all right so that's the debugger um, so yeah, I've already gone 30 minutes here so um, let me just mention the extensions um, so I've, I've mostly set up for our class the, the stuff you need for doing C++ coding for our assignment, so like a, a code formatter and gotten hooks for the build system, um, and you should have installed the IntelliSense already so that you automatically detect problems in the build and things like that and, and get the, the, uh, the, the, the squiggles, you know, to, to indicate the locations where it detects compilation problems and things. Um, I mean, you know, you can install, you know, if you need to set up for other languages, this would be where extension would, would be more useful. Um, I, I probably should have stopped my debugger here, so I'm not still running, so I'll go ahead and, and stop my debug session there. So, um, so just as a quick example, like um, I'm an old Emacs and VI user, so if I wanted to install um, Emacs key bindings, um, I might look for uh, Emacs um, um, key bindings or Emacs key map. Um, kind of as a hint, um, so you get uh, the person who actually published these extensions. So, so, so Emacs, like, like um, or sorry, Visual Studio Code, like Emacs, but also like uh, Atom and, um, and uh, Sublime, they're all extensible. Uh, editors, which kind of means that people can create some sort of, uh, of, of an extension that you can then use and plug into your editor, okay? So Emacs and VI were doing this long, long time ago, right? Um, and, and so modern editors kind of now do that. So, so you can have communities of people then um, um, submitting and contributing code in the form so so Visual Studio Code calls these extensions right so so you can use extensions that people have have done so although you know the 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 quality of the ex extensions can vary a lot you know so I often try to look for that there is um, I, I believe the VS Code Emacs is the the ex the official extension for uh, Emacs key bindings that the VS Code team has um, has um, um, published. Um, so anyway, if you find something you want to try, you can, you can you know, get it and, and install it. Um, so you should have seen this when you installed the, the C++ IntelliSense extension, which is also, I believe, from VS Code, um, um, an official extension, right? Um, and um, I've noticed there, there's a little bit of, of, you can't always completely tell whether the installation is done yet or not. You might have to reload um, to see things. So, so, so after you reload, if you look here, you should see all your extensions that are installed, right? Um, so I now should have my my key mac, my Emacs key bias because by default, when you install a new extension, it'll start it off enabled. So I can do, be able to do things like uh, Control E um, is usually bound on Emacs to go to the end of the line. Control A is usually bound to go to the beginning of the line. Um, control Space to start. Um, and so on. Um, control G to, to stop selecting text, right? Um, if you want to, um, it, of course, you, you can click on this. Again, that's kind of the icon for getting into settings. Uh, if you want to, you can just disable the, the an extension if it's not working for you. 
you know, without getting rid of it, or you can just uninstall it altogether, right? So I can disable my my uh, Oh, um, oh yeah, but like I said, you have to, so my, it was still enabled until I'll do a reload, I guess. So, so if I reload, I should have, even though I've got the um, Emacs key binding extension installed, um, I should no longer have the Emacs key binding. So yeah, Control E is not doing, going to the end of the line, or Control A to the beginning. Control A is doing, the, uh, normally Control A does, selects everything, so instead of going to the beginning of the line. So. Um, all right. So that's basically it um, of, of kind of some of the things I wanted to mention. Uh, there's a lot more to learn, you know, so you might be interested in looking at the Visual Studio Code documentation or running through some of the basic tutorials and things. Um, here's some reference, uh, a general reference card for the, 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 uh, the GNU debugger. If, if you're interested in, in the more powerful stuff you can do with the, the GNU debugger here. Um, okay, so that's it for this video, and I will see you in our next one.